Hello, everybody. Jeff Mason, your Simple Biz Guy here. Happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas to you. So this is going to be a kickoff our Christmas edition, if you will. As you can see, we got the tree. I got books, people. I'm ready to send you books for your stocking stuffers. How's that look? Doesn't that look nice? Nice and thin, easy, goes into stocking. You know, that's what I'm doing, right? I wrote a book. I'm doing a podcast because I wrote a book, and we've got some. We got a story to tell, and that's what we're all about here. So please go on Amazon.com, uh, grab a copy of the book. You can get it on ebook at a number of different outlets, Kindle Books, uh, Barnes & Noble ebook, and a few more. But, uh, you know, certainly uh, it's right around the holidays here. They, Amazon can get it to you in time, and we got books, people. So $18.95, again, 255 tools, 224 pages. From the feedback I'm getting... So far from people who have read the book, one word would explain it, entertaining. And I'm really happy about that because I tried to write it in a way that's just easy on the eyes and mind and boom, it goes. So today we're going to be talking about the secret sauce of the book. And that is called The Silent Business Killer. Well, what is that? Well, in 1985 or 86, I read this little piece of paper in some magazine. I don't even know what it was. I don't know what periodical it was, but I tore it out. And I have, this has been with me since 1980, I guess it was really 88 when it happened, um, when, I, when I took it out. But there's a study by TARP back in the mid-80s that basically um, identified that in, in, in about 26 of 27 customers who have a bad experience never complain. Why is that? Because they don't expect anything to happen as a result of their complaint, right? Every, 91% of those people who are affected, never come back to the company. So that those 91% of the people just leave. The other thing was each affected person tells 9 to 10 colleagues, 13% of the malcontents spread the news to 20 or more people. So they're a megaphone for the bad experience and let people know, hey, this isn't working out. So think about that. So I read this, and I, you know, year after year, I would relook at this piece of paper, and I would, I would watch business happen and record business happen and realize that, oh my gosh, this comes into play way more than I ever thought, right? I mean, it, people are getting upset. They're out there megaphoning it in the treetops, and the, the company who provided the bad service never hears about it. So in the mid-90s, I labeled this thing. I said, hey, this is, I call this thing the silent business killer. I don't know. It's all over the place. I'm running into it right and left, and it's, it's affecting businesses wherever I work, wherever I go, I'm, I'm, here, I'm running into it. It's just, it's right there in my face. I've never heard anybody talk about this in management meetings. I've heard no CEOs, CFOs, anybody, COOs ever talk about this. And yet my book is practically centered around this little piece of paper. I'm telling you, it's crazy. So what I've really come to realize is this plays havoc with all businesses, it just doesn't play havoc with uh, a small business or a solopreneurship or an entrepreneurship. It plays havoc with big companies. The problem is we never hear it because it's set in the, it lurks in the shadows. It's out there. It does its work, you know, behind closed doors. We can't really, as the company providing that bad service, hear about it. So when you look at my book and what, how it's structured, if you go back to the, the original podcast and a little bit of outline on the book, you'll remember that I set up 255 tools in eight chapters in this tool chest, right? This eight drawer thing. And, and we're, on a, we're on a mountainous road with guardrails on each side going towards a tunnel, which is the happy customer. Well, the guardrails protect us from that steep drop off to the left, which is the silent business killer but the sheer cliff to the right is a lost customer. Remember what that TARP study said. 91% of those 26 out of 27 customers have a bad experience and don't say anything. 91% of those never come back. So there's a lot of lost business out there. So I figured, hey, I don't hear anybody else talking about this. I'm going to talk about it from the treetops. This is a problem. Think about it. Digest it. Learn about it. I got books, people. <laughs> I got books. Buy the book. Dive into it and, and learn about it. But I'm telling you, as a solopreneur, it will help you it, as a business unit in a large company. It will help you retain customers and do a better job of delivering customer-pleasing service. So when I looked at this book, and sorry about the so, I, I told you I was going to get rid of this thing. But if you look at my book, it's all about customer-pleasing behavior. 
my pedigree is sales. It has nothing to do with sales. This, this book has maybe two pages on buying and none on selling. Why is that? Because most of the solopreneurs out there, quite frankly, in my 35 years of experience, have told me point blank, they don't want to learn how to sell. It's not in their bailiwick of things they want to do. So why jam sales techniques and methods down their throat if they don't want it? But every single business, every single business, folks, is subject to being struck by the silent business killer. So I don't care what you do, what kind of company you're in, what business unit, you can benefit from understanding what's up against you, and you can benefit from understanding how to create ways that please customers, and that's the whole nature of it. The silent business killer attacks businesses that provide bad customer situa- you know, experiences. You want to try to flip that switch and create good customer experiences. That's what this whole podcast series and website and book is about. So when you, when you really look at that, that's where we come up with this whole concept about the, the silent business killer. I'll give you an example. I mean, I walked, into a, uh, I walked into a store the other day. It was about two months ago. And I asked for a roll of stamps. And before the person even said, hey, how you doing? They launched into, oh, by the way, whatever you do, never take your grandchildren to this place because blah, 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 blah. And I thought, wow, I may, you may have heard me tell this story before, but you know, I thought, this is crazy. This is a silent business killer. This is that 13% of the malcontents spread the news to 20 or more people. This person was shouting this from the rooftops to everybody who walked up to that counter that day. This poor business suffered because of it, because they delivered poor service, and, and they're getting sunk at the, at the you know, check-in line. So anyway, it, it is really out there. It is really large and in charge to understand more of it. I, I really encourage you to look into the book, because the guardrails are the tools. They're helping protect your car, which is your business, from going off the road and falling down or losing a customer. That's what we're all about. You know, I, I mean, there's, when you really think of it, making customers happy is what pays our bills. I don't care. You can, you can shake it all down and, and sit, you know, pour it all out. But when the day is done and the sun sets, we make money. We get paid by making customers happy. I heard a friend of mine tell me recently, he went, he was at a national meeting and the meeting started off and the first sentence of the meeting was that we do not work for the customers. We work for the shareholders. And that's, that's okay for some big companies, I guess. But you know what? I'm appealing to companies out there, 20 million of us that are solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, small businesses. You're not working uh, for shareholders. Your customers pay the bill. You're working for it. your customers. You want them to come back. So enough said on that. The Silent Business Killer, a huge, a huge component of this book. Please grab it. Uh, it can still ship to you in time for Christmas. You know, we, we hope it helps, and, and certainly it's there after Christmas if you miss it. But it's a great little present to give out. I think I think everyone would enjoy uh, being able to just breeze through this and say, hey, you know what? That's a, that was entertaining, uh, entertaining read. A little bit of humor in there. I do my best. Anyway, we're trying to keep this podcast at 10 minutes. You're brushing your teeth. You're getting ready for work. You're, you're, you're on the go making breakfast and boom. Hey, Alexa, turn on uh, Simple Biz you know, 360 podcast. Boom, here we go. So we're going to sew it up. That's what I want you to experience every week. I'm going to try to lighten and tighten this thing to 10 minutes if I can. So sorry about the last two podcasts that were 16 and 20 minutes, but I'm going to zero in on the 10-minute deal here. So any rate, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody. You can get us at simplebiz360.com. That's simplebiz360.com. And I'm going to leave you with a uh, what's the lo- lost in the shuffle uh, rock and roll of the day. It's not really lost in the shuffle, but Christian rock and roll, have you ever even tried this or listened to it? Well, grab a band called Third Day, a CD put out in 2010 called or 8 called Revelation. If you're struggling with stuff and you've got some issues and you just want some lyrics to speak to you, man, try this thing, and these boys can rock and roll. I'm telling you, they're out of Atlanta, Georgia, and they bust it. So at any rate, folks, Merry Christmas. Have a great, uh, have a great set of holidays. And... Hold on to your sand, keep pleasing those customers, and keep the shiny side up when you're driving. Thank you.